give you guys some some love here we got boom renita brooks and then we got bailey parrot uh so we're using a feature called ecamm live to do this here boom and boom and boom and boom and boom well, why don't you post in the comments if you've ever done a client appreciation party because this is what i'm going to do and, and, and i want you guys to to learn from me uh, I'm going to chop this video into two separate ones. One for the Instagram collab feature. I'm going to stop it right there. And then that's going to be one separate video. Like, hey, have you heard about the new Instagram collab feature? Then I'm going to do client appreciation uh, parties in the next one. Two for one. So 30 minute video. I get two really good uh, YouTube. Disney. Yeah, Wally. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. It is Wall it is Wally, right? Wally. Um Eva. Good movie. All right, client appreciation party. So Billy, uh Billy just did her first one. Wally, yes, thank you, Heather. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. We're headed there. Talk about when art imitating life, like this whole virtual world that Facebook's trying to create. They want people to just live in a virtual world, not leave your house. And you you know you don't like your life? Oh, perfect. You live in this virtual world where everything is perfect. It's called Facebook anyways, right? Everybody's balling out, has great relationships, and everything's perfect uh, in the world of social media. But uh, I digress, as they say. Let's, uh, let's get to the client appreciation parties. Billy had her first one. Billy, why don't you put in the comments what you feel um, were some of the good things that you did from it. And then I'm going to give you where to start. Uh, I have my notes. Hold on one second. Dun, 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 dun. First things first, you want to start with a budget. Uh, and when I give you numbers, you, it, it, it may be it may be a little low for your market and you may think it's a little bit high. Um, but I will tell you on look, I got I actually wrote it down on paper uh, the other day we did this on Clubhouse for the YPNers. Uh, but first things you want to do is come up with a budget. We'll spend on average, uh, $1,500 to $2,000 on a party, a client appreciation party. We like to do them once a quarter, once a quarter for all of our clients. So let's say once every 90 days, um, for our a plus clients, we like to do smaller things, uh, every 45 days and, and smaller could be 12 to 20 people, right? Your A plus people are people that have sent you multiple referrals, multiple referrals. Um, and so, Hey Lauren, how are you? Good morning. Why is not your photo come up? I think it's cause your uh, iPhone user, you didn't get permission, privacy permission or something. But, uh, so it's something you should do on a regular basis. We need the write offs. You guys are making money instead of paying the taxes, reinvest that into your business, that write-off will help to defer some of your tax liability. Uh, but that's, I'm not an accountant, nor will I play one on Facebook. But the 1500 to 2000 I promise you, every single one that we do, we can track three to five transactions from it, right? So whatever your median sale price is, you take that and you know what your commission is per transaction, 500 to a thousand percent return on investment. Okay. But once you have your budget, you then look at the venues and here's, uh, here's some of the ones that we've, that we have, we have done in the past. The very first one we ever did, we hosted at our house. Uh, at the time I had a really big, like queen Anne Victorian home with a water view, it's 3,700 square feet. Um, you know, and I was trying to flex on him. Like I wanted to impress him. Hey, come to my house. We made all the food and we were the hosts of the party. Uh, and then we hired a band at that time. So a couple things I, I learned at the very first one, because when you learn things you should good or bad, uh, you know, not to do it again. Being the host is, is not the answer, right? You want, you know, the thought was, we're welcoming you to our home. We're breaking bread. We're the host. But when you're the host, you're too busy. Like, oh my gosh, I got the lasagna in the oven. The baked seed is going to burn. Oh, the burgers. Oh, bleh. you're running all over the place. What you want to be doing is spending this, this FaceTime, talking to people, learning about their homes and their lives and their kids and everything else. 
that makes better relationships, which leads to referrals. When you get past it, like, that's the guy who sold me my house to like, yo, that's J-Man and Christina and these are their kids, you know, AJ and Valentino. Then you become part of their family. And it's not a question whether they're going to list with you again. It's just how many more people are they going to refer to you? I promise you. I promise you. Okay. But uh, don't be the host. Don't be the host. Hire the caterer. Fire the band. <laughs> if there's a hashtag for today, hashtag hire the caterer. Fire the band. Uh, the money that we spent uh, on the live band, people, you know, not like people were, were jamming out. I'm like, yeah, you know, um, it's better to have the food taken care of and then be, being able to, to, uh, have that quality time. Now, depending on who your, your ideal client is, who, you know, you have to really look at your client base and say, you know, for us, the majority of our clients are millennials with children. Cause that's who we are, right? We're, um, I'm an elder millennial. Uh, my wife's five years younger than me and our, our, our clients typically have school age children. And so our events will always be kid friendly cause we got two kids and we have to do something with them during our event that doesn't mean, you know, keep us busy going, where are they? What are they doing? Are they running into traffic? Like we have to <laughs> do something to keep them occupied. So, uh, you can do things like a bounce house or, my sister-in-law, who's 15 years younger than me, she's really good with arts and crafts. So is my sister. Uh, so if you have like an arts and crafts table, that's usually good. It doesn't cost you much. You just got to be a little bit Pinteresty or or find somebody who is and then put them on, right? If you got to pay them to work for a few hours, 15 bucks an hour, who cares? It's worth it, right? To have somebody uh, to not only entertain the children, but give them something that they can take home, that they can remember that it came from you and your company. So that was the first one. I'm going to just scroll through these quickly because I don't want this to last forever. Uh, but as you hear them, if you have questions about it, just put it in the comments. So we, we've done it at a park multiple times where you rent a lodge. I, I like I, That's one of my favorites. That's the one we recently just did uh, two weeks ago. We did a bowling alley. We did a karaoke bar because that was something that I love and I learned that my clients don't love it. Nobody wants to hear a bunch of strangers ah, 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 think that they're rock stars. I mean, I really am a rock star, but uh, some of the other folks were not. Axe throwing. Oh, man. If you have an axe throwing place in your town, they're open everywhere now, just about, I, I feel. That is that is the most fun you can have uh, at an event. That was a hit. That was a big hit. Uh, we did a pedal cart you know, where they have like, they're like little bikes that everybody sits on with a bar in the middle kind of a thing and a guy in the front of it. And they do, did like a tour of our downtown area and did a little history. Then we stopped at a couple little bars. Uh, th that's typically for A plus clients because you can only, depending on where you are, get 12 to 15 people on that, on that pedal cart. There's also a paddle boat, which we want to do in the spring. Uh, wine tastings. Yeah, wine tastings are good. And that's actually my next one, a paint and sip party. If you have, uh, that's just what we call it here locally. There's always a place where you bring the people and they, they pick something and then everybody paints it, right? Man, it's so much fun. And there's wine involved. So they get a little tipsy and they let loose and they have fun painting. Uh, when we did it, we did something, it was like a home or something real estate related, at least to have the theme involved. Everybody loved that. That's going to be a smaller group because that could be 35 to 50 bucks per person. We did a boat tour. So if you have any kind of waterfront where you live, uh, we rented a, it's a huge boat. It holds, I don't know, a couple hundred people. They include food in the package. And it's like one of those, not a paddle boat, but it has the big paddles on the back. I guess that's a paddle boat, right? Big round paddles. Obviously, I'm, I'm a big boater. I, I could tell you I bought a boat and I sold a boat. And it wasn't worth it. Uh, private movie theater rental. I think Jeff Jeff said that I rented a movie theater once to did a screening for a kid's movie. Yeah. Uh, private movie theaters, depending on where you are, they were hurting during the pandemic. We rented one. It was 99 bucks. $99. And then we were able to bring stuff in, child keys. We talked before, uh, put some of the sponsor stuff on the screen that, and make it fun. Right, make it like a red carpet event. I thought about this the other day. I, I should we should have did it when we did our event, but have a red carpet and have like 
you know, a photographer there taking pictures, taking family photos, like a night at the movies. I mean, just, just have fun with it. What else do we have here? We were going to do a drive-in during the pandemic, but uh, that got canceled because the drive-in actually ended up closing. Uh, but we're still going to do an, uh, a night at the drive-in. And then the, the park lodge stuff. Okay. Now, I would go to, and this depends on what your local laws are, and talk to your title companies, mortgage companies, uh, real estate attorneys. But go to your affiliates, people who support you and who you refer business to. And, and you guys have the same clients, right? We have an attorney that we refer 40 transactions to a year. So we talk to that attorney and say, hey, we're going to do a client appreciation party. Would you like to be a part of it? You know what I'm saying? And then talk to your mortgage person, same thing. Of course they would because they're always looking for ways to build better relationships with clients. If they're not and don't want to build better relationships with clients, then don't work with them anymore. Right? Let's get that air horn. Yeah. Don't work with them anymore if they do not want to elevate themselves or their business Yo, my camera is backwards. This is Jeff's fault. Hold on. You can't even read my... Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, I went black and white. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I'm going back to color. There we go. All right, sorry. Little thing, see, look, now you can read my shirt. Elevate, elevate. But go to your vendors and then, you know, your $3,000 budget and I'm saying... uh. In, a, in your larger markets, like if you're in New York, if you're in New York proper, it's probably going to be more expensive. But like Lauren, you're in Long Island. Man, we we get the Holiday Inn for 1500 bucks over there when we do like self-produced events. So I think you can find smaller venues uh, for relative because there's so much competition that drives the price down. But uh, be creative. There really is no wrong answer. But go to the vendors. They'll help to pay for it. Now, I mean the affiliates. Now, I would also go to your vendors because here's here's the other thing. We want to give stuff away, right? When you create an event, you don't just go there and be like, make it fun, right? Even if you're not a fun, you're not as fun as the next person, you can make it fun by giving things away. So you go to your vendors, you have a painter you refer, you have a landscaper, You if you're uh, above... The Mason Dixon, is that what it's called? If you get snow, you have a plow guy that you refer. Uh, electrician, you have a carpet cleaner, you have all these people that you refer. Go to everyone that you've ever sent a referral to. Everyone you've ever sent a referral to and say, uh, could you donate a gift certificate? Uh, home, home cleaners are great. Professional organizers are great. Interior designers are great. Home stagers are great. And say, could you donate a gift certificate that I can raffle off at my client appreciation party? So the painter can say, okay, I want, and sometimes you got to suggest stuff. Painter, you will paint one free room, uh, 10 by 10, one color, two coats. The painter knows that if you go into a house and paint one room, they're going to go, while you're here, how about all this white walls I have? Help me out. Okay. Same thing with the landscaper. Landscaper does one cut and trim. He knows that when he's there cutting the grass and trimming it up, they're going to go, you know, while you're here, can you help me with the peonies over here? And what do I do with these mums in the fall? And what do I chop down here? They're going to get more business. Same thing for the plow guy. Hey, you just come and do one plow when it one uh, shoveling one plow through. I don't know. He comes and plows their driveway. The first snowfall, they're going to go, wow, this is nice. I'm not out there freaking breaking my back and he might get a plow contract out of it. You get the idea, right? Home stager, one free hour. Interior designer, one free hour. Uh, professional organizer, if you have one, find one. They're one of the best people to have as part of your, your vendor squad, your team, your superhero team. All right. Now, when they come in, you have a few computers set up. I'm gonna, we're going to get to that in a second or iPads. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to give them one raffle ticket. One raffle ticket just for being my client. Now we're also going to give them a second raffle ticket or a third or fourth or fifth for every referral that they gave us this year. So if my A-plus client walks in, 
boy, I want them to feel like they are VIP because they are VIP. These are the ones you have to love on the most. You say, oh, hold up, hold up. My client here, Jose Marrero, nine transactions this year from one person. Here, Jose, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why don't you give him a trophy? Top referral giver of 2021. Bam! Like make them feel special. Okay. And giving them another gift, um, another raffle ticket doesn't cost you anything more, right? But it gives them a better opportunity to win things. Have a grand prize that you're going to give away. Keep that, you know, a couple hundred bucks, iPad or, or something cool, whatever's trending. High perceived value, low cost is always good. Now, we will also give them an additional raffle ticket for every recommendation or review that they give us. That's where the computers come in, right? When you invite somebody somewhere, since the beginning of time, if they were brought up right, their parents always said, oh, you're going to a party. You got to bring something. That's just proper etiquette. And they're always like, can I bring it? No, don't bring anything. Just bring yourself. So through law of reciprocation, they're going to be like, I want to do something for you. Just you being here, your presence is enough, but if you'd like to go above and beyond, we'll give you an extra raffle ticket for every review or recommendation that you give us. So if you have a face, Facebook page, which you should, have it open for recommendations there. Have your Google uh, review page, and then anywhere else where you're getting uh, recommendations or reviews. I would not recommend Zillow be one of them because those are going to disappear soon. As you know, uh, Zillow is a brokerage in in almost all the states, if not all the states already. Okay. Another great way to get reviews and recommendations. Now, the marketing of the event. And feel free to stop me as I keep talking. Uh, do, 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 do. Going to have my daughter. Play. Oh, Lauren's doing a, a wine tasting. Have your daughter play the piano. My son will be writing names on wine glasses. Great idea, Lauren Lolly Alter Muner Norris. <laughs> that's, that's pretty long. Uh, but in the marketing, so we're going to do it by air, by sea, and <laughs> by land, air, sea, and land, right? We're going to send a postcard. In that postcard, uh, we're going to, you know, the details of the event. I like postcards as opposed to a direct mail piece because when people get mail, they don't open it because they think it's a bill. Postcard, it's easy to see what it is. And if you have a theme and they'll know what to expect. Uh, on there, you can have either a QR code that they can scan to RSVP and have it go to a Google form where they put their name or family name, how many are attending, uh, and any other additional information. Okay? Make it easy so that you don't have to answer all the calls. However, we're also going to send an email. We're also going to send a text message. We're also going to send a Facebook message. We're also going to post it on our Facebook page. Okay? This is for our all of our clients, A, B, and C. Uh, this is not a Buffini tutorial, but you understand that if you have a D client, meaning like their name is Richard Noggin, okay, another name for Richard, another name for Noggin, like they're, you did not like them throughout the whole transaction, you don't add them to your database, man, and you don't market to them because they're going to refer other Ds that you don't want as part of your pipeline or your business. When you first start in real estate, you have to take anybody that you know has a pulse. But once you start building a quality business and you're working by referral, Work with the people that you like, okay? So A, B, and Cs. Anybody that we don't get an RSVP to or from, we then follow up with a phone call, text, or Facebook message because it gives us something to talk about, something nice, right? Hey, uh, hey, John, this is Jeremiah. I'm just calling. Uh, did you get my invite to the client appreciation party? Oh, yeah, yeah. We just have a conflict that night. Oh, okay. No problem, man. I'm just checking in. How are things? And then have a conversation, right? How's the house? How's the family? That's it. I don't want you to say, do you know anybody that's going to buy or sell? Give me. That's already like on the back of their mind. You're already top of mind. Don't be a salesperson. Be a human being that cares about their life. Okay, that, that, that's what it's all about. All right. And then, no, I think that's, a, I think that's, a, oh, 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 yes. Here are some couple things that we did. We want to take a lot of pictures. Okay, whether you hire a photographer or you just take out your take out your phone, take a lot of pictures, take videos. Um, if you feel uncomfortable, I know somebody's going to say, "Do you ask permission?" If they're my friends, 
and they're my clients, they know that it's going on social media. But, you know, you want to take a lot of photos. If you have to hire a photographer to be there, that's a few hundred bucks. Why not have a, a, a corner of the room set up for family photos, right? It's fall. Maybe you're going to do it for fall or Thanksgiving or Christmas. What a great idea. Uh, we're thinking of hiring a, a Santa this year and have, having some Santa photos uh, done at the office and have them come by and just, hey, family photos, boom. Just another reason for them to come through. Costs us a few hundred bucks to hire a photographer and, and a fake Santa. Santa's real. He's just unavailable at that time. Why not, right? Have that photographer take family photos. Uh, but that's the key. You want them to go to work on Monday and everybody has that small talk at work, right? They go, oh, uh, you know, how, uh, how was your weekend? How about them bills? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk about the bills game. And it's like, oh, well, what'd you do? Oh, man, I, I went to this great axe throwing, the axe throwing place over there on Liberty Pole. Yeah, I went there. We had a ball. Oh, who'd you go there with? Oh, my realtor. He threw a client appreciation party. You're who? My realtor. Oh, I don't have a client appreciation party for my realtor. It's like, ding, 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 ding. You are the winner. Hold on. Where's my winner? Here it is. You won. You've won at that moment, right? So tagging them in all the photos, get it on social media. That's really going to up your, your social credibility of being just an awesome human being and taking care of your clients. This year, we hired a, a photo booth person. And again, most markets have some kind of photo booth person. This, it was funny because the person who runs the photo booth is the husband of the photographer that we use, um, where there's two, for, there's two people that work. So the wife does the photos for our listings, and they have a, another side business for this photo booth. So again, keeping it in with the vendors, we had them come in and it was one of those fun photo booths where you have all the funny mustaches and the glasses and all that. So it adds to the fun vibe of, of, of the event. And then uh, they were able to print them right there on Kodak Film. Okay. I think it was Kodak Film. I hope it was. I should have double checked that. But on the photo, it says the Monero team client appreciation party 2021 right so they got a great photo of them at an end of an event and boom, 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 we got some branding in the corner it also gives us a digital copy of that so that when we post it to to the facebook and anywhere else we can tag them in it all right so let's see is there any other questions i'm coming to my 30 minute mark a little bit past, but I talked a lot. I gave you a lot of information. Uh, I, I think one of the questions that may come up is that you're afraid that if you do this, nobody will show up. Right? I've heard it. I've heard it from multiple agents. I want to do it, but I'm scared if I invite my clients. Or maybe you're just in the business a year. Maybe you just got licensed. And you're like, dude, I got eight clients. It's going to be a little party. Well, why not just get a couple of other agents in the office and say, hey, uh, Lauren and Billy and Jeffrey, why don't we get together? I like you guys. We have a similar vibe. We have similar client bases. Let's get together and do a joint client appreciation party. All right? Then you got three people, three groups of clients, and everybody looks good. You work for the same company. It's great. Or if you're a broker owner or manager, why don't you do it for all of your agents? Now think of think of a value add for your agents. Instead of like, oh, I'm going to host a happy hour for you. Okay. Um, when my company hosts things like that, I'm like, I'm not going to get a babysitter to come drink with my with my colleagues. Okay. However, if the broker said, we're doing something like a client appreciation party, you... We'll pay for the marketing. You invite your clients. We just want them to have a good time and appreciate you. It's a win-win for everybody. All right? So join with other agents or or have, you know, talk to your manager. Maybe he does it for the office. I can promise you there's no wrong answer of what might happen here. Right? If you If you do it and three people show up, who cares? Those three people, they're going to have the best time of their life and they're going to appreciate you and you're gonna get referrals. 
All right, all right, I don't see any other questions. I'm going to play superhero. Oh, okay, thanks, Renita. Renita's question is, I gotta wait for the applause to stop. Uh, I struggle with where to have one because some of my clients are 40 minutes to an hour away from my primary market. Okay, so why not, you're in Houston, right? You said, why not uh, have two? Nothing wrong with that. Why not say, okay, here's where most of my clients are. And then if you have like another hub where you could say, I'm going to do a second one. They don't have to be two big ones. Maybe do two mid-sized ones and uh, do it that way. That's what I would do. Or if you do it someplace where it's like really a destination, like, yo, we're going to do it at this park that's really nice. So you can not only come, like that's one of the great things about doing it at a uh, at one of your parks and you rent the lodge, right? Because it's like not only you come and, and if the weather's nice, you got the bounce house. You get all these outdoor activities, but then they can enjoy the park. They can have a day at the park, right? Um, Atlanta, you got Piedmont Park. Like New York, shoot, you got Central Park. You got all kinds of parks throughout there. Houston, I'm, I'm sure you have something like that as well. So maybe if you make it more of a destination and, and give them like, hey, here's the party, but here's 10 other things you can do in the area with kids, uh, with your family when you come. Or just do two separate ones. Great, um, great, great idea. Jeffrey, not a bad idea either. Get your top clients a hotel room, separate hotel rooms, okay? Um, if they if they are driving far and say, hey, like let's say if I, I'm in Rochester, New York, we're 60 miles from uh, Buffalo. So if I did business in Buffalo, which I never would, but if I did and I had a separate... Hey, I would say, hey, we're going to do a client appreciation at Niagara Falls, dude. That's a destination. That's a wonder of the world. Get them a room, right? If there's five people, 10 people, I mean, that could get pricey. But if it's starting to be, you know, subsidized by your, by some of your vendors and your affiliates, they're going to love you forever. Okay. So that's, uh, that's going to wrap it up for the show today. But just keep in mind that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And hopefully you know how much I care about you. And thanks for tuning in to Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday. Make sure to share it. If you're watching this on the YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. Make it a great day.